Hi, my name's Kit Dale. I'm a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, two time World Pro Champion, and amateur tattoo artist. You're probably wondering why should you buy this DVD? Well, frankly, I need the money. And. I shouldn't say that. Can we cut it? Alright. This isn't about teaching you different techniques and variations. You can find them all over the internet. It's about simplifying all those techniques into concepts. In Volume 2, we're going to explore psychological warfare like that of Sun Tzu's The Art of War. And by utilizing the steps that I'll teach you, you're going to be able to defeat any opponent, even ones bigger, larger, more handsome than you. There's a huge misconception of timing at the moment in Jiu Jitsu where people think that you're going to develop timing through drilling. But that's not true. You're going to develop reaction speed through drilling. Timing is a complete different beast and it's one of the most important things in Jiu Jitsu. And I'm going to teach you how to develop proper timing. Well, that's enough of me talking. Here's a quick video of the product and if you like that, you just need to click that little button right there. Psychological warfare. Probably the most overlooked aspect of all sports. Now this is really important. This is the difference that makes you either elite or mediocre. Some aspects of psychological warfare I like to use is making your opponent feel like you're powerful when you're most weak or most weak when you're most powerful. And one way you can do this is the way I call poker face. So for example, if I'm in an area where I want to make my opponent think I'm in a lot of trouble, I'll do certain things like I'll look around a lot, I'll look nervous, I'll look at my coach, I'll move around. If I start moving around, I look around, even in this situation here, if I start looking around like that, automatically it makes me look like I'm nervous. But if I was in a situation where I was nervous and I wanted to look confident, I would look directly at him and I wouldn't look around at all and I would look like I'm confident. There's a big game here that people forget about, which makes a huge difference. You want to make them think you're attacking left when you're attacking right. You want to make them think you're attacking right when you're attacking left. You want to make them think that you're going high when you're going low. You want to avoid them where they're most powerful. You want to attack where they're most weak. If I'm ever coming up against a high level wrestler that has got better takedowns than me and I want to pull guard, I'm not going to walk out there like I'm going to pull guard because most likely he's going to predict that and he's going to be able to take me down off that. I'm going to walk out there like I'm going to take him down. I'm going to assume the posture of a proper wrestler and I'm going to look confident while I do it. And then when he takes his mind off of me pulling guard and thinks about taking me down, bang, that's when I'm going to pull guard. Same thing with a high level judoka. I will puff my hands out, I look like I'm going to work my judo with him. As soon as he start, stops thinking about me pulling guard is when I'm going to pull guard. You always want to attack when they just forget about that. And if they don't, then choose something else. I'm not going to keep hunting an armbar if he keeps thinking I'm going to armbar him. I'm going to make him think I'm going to armbar him when I'm going to choke him and vice versa. So it's important to understand the poker face and how to implement that when you are training and when you're competing. So practice it as much as you can and try and get feedback from your opponents, okay, or your partners. And it's really important, so make sure that you spend as much time on that as you can. Here you'll see me puff my arms up like I'm a judoka and I look like I'm looking for a takedown and then I pull guard. I do it again, puff my arms up, look like I'm going to play the takedown game with him and just as he thinks about that and he relaxes about me pulling guard, I pull guard. I do the same thing now in a wrestling stance. So a bit lower, I grab him, start moving his head down. He starts thinking, okay, I'm going to take this guy down and then I pull guard. Or at least he thinks that I'm not going to pull guard. Now I'm just moving around, I'm just creating like visual distractions. I move my body around, I change postures and always keep him guessing. I do the same thing when I'm passing a lot, is I use my, my hands like uh, the boxer uses a jab, where I just create little diversions and make him focus on my hands while my legs start passing. And I have a lot of success in competition with this kind of stuff. Just moving the body, always moving the body and changing position, because it always keeps him guessing. So yeah, just move the hands, try and get him to focus on the hands while the legs are doing the work. I move everything. I don't stay still. I don't allow him time to sit there and work things out. Not entirely sure what that was, but we'll leave it there anyway. This is where I cast a few little spells on him, like Gandalf. And I walk around him. This is Jedi mind tricks, but nah, but it's more just me creating diversions, making him think that I'm a wizard and not a jujitsu player. 
So you see, I'm just moving around, trying to distract him with my hands while my legs do the work. And now I'm playing like a drunken monkey style and using my legs. If you like that, you just need to click that little button right there. Just press it, just press it. Just press it, you won't regret it. Just do it, just do it! Press it now! I knew you didn't have it in you. you never did. You're soft, like your dad said. Press the button, please. Press the button. If you press the button, I can go. Press it. Do I wait until I press it? Or... Oh, oh, hold on a sec. Hello? Oh no, I gotta take this. I'll see you. I'll see you later. Yeah, they're pressing the button now, I swear.